If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more money to fund your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience in real estate investing, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into the money in just a moment. Well, welcome to the Jay Connor Show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you from right here in Moorhead City, North Carolina. And if this is the first time you've been to the show or the podcast, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes, right here on the show, we talk about everything related to real estate investing. And my expert guest that I have on with me today is Larry Goins out of Charlotte, North Carolina. But before I introduce you to Larry, I just promised you that I was going to plug you into the money. So what in the world am I talking about? Well, coming up, my last live event for 2018 is right around the corner. It's a very, very uh, uh, short few weeks away. 2018, right here in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. It's the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. And why in the world would you want to check it out and attend? Well, first of all, I don't know another event like this. It's a three-day event. And uh, on the first day, uh, I, we go into private money, deep, how you get the money, uh, regardless of your credit and et cetera. Doesn't have anything to do with your income or your experience. And I'm not talking hard money. I'm talking private money. The afternoon of the first day, we uh, go on my bus tour, which is unlike any other bus tour I know. We actually go to my houses that my company and myself own. Either we just acquired them and we're starting to rehab them or uh, they're in the process of renovation or they're finished and uh, staged ready for Southern Living Magazine pictures and, you know, just starting to be marketed. I went uh, from zero to hero in 12 months. Uh, I went from absolutely no deals uh, to $500,000 in private money um, and over six figures. Um, I'm trying to work on uh, $200,000 uh, in an, as a net worth uh, from my real estate investing endeavors. Well, and uh, since coming into Jay's world, we've uh, we've raised over $250,000 of private money and put all that to work in real estate. And we've also uh, amassed over uh, $600,000 worth of uh, cash and equity in real estate. So don't miss Jay's live event coming up in October. And so on the bus tour, it's me at this event. Nobody else. I'm not farming this out to another trainer or educator. You get me for three days. And uh, on the bus tour, I tell you how we found the house, give you all the numbers, uh, how much I bought it for, how I controlled the property, how much we're selling it for, the profits, et cetera. And on the bus tour, you're going to meet uh, some of our team, my contractors, my um, interior designer, and other important members uh, on the team and how we work together. And you're able to learn all this with the curtain pulled completely back. On the second day, I teach the first three of my four pillars of my business, how we find deals. I teach you my foreclosure system, which accounts for 25% of our business. Uh, how we find deals before the real estate investors know they exist. Uh, then more about funding of the deals and then how we can sell any house in 72 hours or less. The afternoon of the second day, I've got private lenders right at the event for you to network with. Then we got an awesome VIP reception on the evening of the second day. Then on the third day, it's all about automation. How do you get out of the way, systemize and automate and learn how to do the business like I do, where you work in the business less than 10 hours per week and automate the rest. Very exciting event coming up. And here's the website right here below on the video. So go over and get registered at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. And you can get it right there. This event is filling up fast. So get on over and register after the show is over. With that on my lands, I am so excited to have my very dear friend for many years now, Larry Goins. He's a legend and he's still living. He's a legend. He's been, he's been uh, buying and selling houses now for over 30 years. He's over in the Charlotte area. He's uh, served in many capacities as far as real estate investing associations goes, he served as the president of the Metro line of real estate investors association over in Charlotte. Uh, it's got over 350 members 
So uh, the reason, you know, I don't know who came up with the phrase that opposites attract, opposites don't attract, like attracts like. You like to hang around people that's like you. And like myself, Larry is a guy that's got a servant's heart and he's all about serving. Uh, he travels across. The, I mean, he's been doing the business for over 30 years and he travels across the nation speaking at many, many real estate uh, investing conferences and uh, expos and conventions. In fact, Larry and I see each other from time to time at the airport and on the airplane from going to different places. But anyway, Larry's written several books. He's a distinguished author. And he also has his own podcast show that you for sure want to check out. He calls it the Bragg Radio Network which stands for the Brain Pick a Pro. And man, Larry has just got it going on. Larry Goins, my dear friend, welcome so much to the show. Awesome, man. Thanks a lot for having me. I really, really appreciate it. That was a great introduction. I just <laughs> want to clarify one thing, though. We actually have two podcasts. Oh. One of them is Bragg Radio, and that stands for Be Rich and Generous. Oh, I got the wrong acronym. Okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. And then we have the other one. The BP a P, which is Brain Pick a Pro. That's where I interview other guest educators just like yourself. Right? I got you. Well, <laughs> see, when I, I tell you what, man, you know, I've been doing my show for a while. I'm not sure I can handle two shows, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And, you know, my land, you know, as both you and I know, I mean, I've, you've, been, you've been buying and selling houses over 30 years. I'm, I'm coming up uh, 15 years. So you got double the time on me. But, um, you know, it, I've discovered no matter how long we're in the business, don't we continue to learn, you know? Oh, there's no question. There's no question about it. You're always learning. If you're not learning, you're dying. Exactly. So, you know, Larry, as much as we've been around each other, personally, I've never heard your backstory as to how you got into this buying and selling a house thing. So take us all the way back to what your what you were doing well, I don't know knowing how old you are you couldn't have done very much before buying and selling <laughs> houses but right. so what was your former career before you got into buying and selling houses and and what was it that actually got you interested in uh, the real estate investing business well that's funny I actually bought my very first house in 1986 okay uh, my first deal was an FHA non-qualifying assumable loan right? Back then, when someone got an FHA loan, if they wanted to sell their house, all they had to do was fill out a, an application. They didn't pull their credit. They didn't approve them or deny them. They just filled out an application and transferred servicing to that new buyer. It was a great way to buy houses for somebody brand new with no credit, no job, no money, no nothing, right? Right. My very first deal. But, uh, but yeah, I got started by watching an infomercial. I don't know if you remember Tom Vu. You remember that guy? No, I don't. Years ago, back in the 80s. Right. I saw his infomercial and went to his uh, preview, went to his three-day, signed up. And from there, I got my real estate license. I got my general contractor's license. I eventually got my securities license, and I sold stocks, bonds, and mutual funds for a few years. But I uh, always came back to real estate. And so far, 30 years later in real estate, I've done wholesaling, I've done fix and flips, I've done short sales, subject to, I've uh, been a hard money lender, I still do hard money lending, I, um, I've i done commercial, multifamily, triple net lease, I've owned Dollar General stores, I've owned Shoney's restaurants, um, I own the office building that I'm in right now, it's a 9,000 square foot building, we occupy about a third and rent out the rest of it, um, and done a lot of single family houses and done subdivisions. I've gone in and bought land, subdivided it, cleared, graded, graveled, and paved the roads. And then I built houses on the lots and sold the houses. So not a whole lot about real estate I hadn't done over those 30 plus years. <laughs> Man, it is true. It sounds like it, Larry. So um, yeah, I, I've done two developments. Uh, uh, one is a condominium development that took four years to get out of the ground. And uh, we were six months too late. The first oh. The first occupancy was like 2008. So, oh no, I'm not developing anymore. Uh, I've got a I got a shopping center, but that's the extent of my commercial. So, Larry, you got you got all this stuff that you've done and that you got going on, right? And so, to be sure, 
I'm not the first person in the world that's asked you this question. And that is, man, what in the world is it that drives you to wow. do all that stuff? That's a really good question. I think the thing about it is I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I don't have a college education, Jay. Okay. I mean, you'll see, you see, I mean, there's one of my bookcases. There's another one of my bookcases and I've got on the other side. I like my whiteboard over there. I love it. I love it. That's my granddaughter's whiteboard. <laughs> but, but, you know, these are, these are four of my probably six or eight bookcases full of courses. So I'm a firm believer in education and I'm always learning, always growing, always reading books. I love Audible. You can listen to a book right here. So I love Audible and I'm always learning and growing. Um, so as far as what drives me, I just enjoy doing what I'm doing. Um, I love real estate. I mean, just today, before we're recording this, I was out in Kannapolis, which is, a, you know, less than an hour from here. I went out there and I looked at this property and we were just going to wholesale this house. Um, we picked it up for 115. It was one of the higher end houses and we were just going to wholesale it for 125. But I'm like, man, this is a hotel deal. All we got to do is send somebody over here to clean up the yard and haul off all the junk and we can put it on the MLS for 139.9 and do nothing to it. Right. Right. So, so, so let me interrupt you for a moment um, to make sure all of our viewers and listeners understand what is wholetailing? <laughs> well, it's like wholesaling, but you get a little bit more money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, it, go it, ahead. It, it, it's, it's, it's less than retail, right? You're it's selling, retail. You're selling price. I'm selling the property, right? For example, I, I have these signs that say, um, they say handyman special and they'll say the number of bedrooms, number of baths, we hand write that in and then it'll have a blank and it says worth and then it'll have another blank and says cash price. So like I put on this one, worth 180, cash price 139.9, right? Woo! So, so yeah, I mean, it's a good deal for somebody. Now I could, uh, now it's probably not enough profit at 139.9 for a fix and flip investor, right. right? But for somebody that's looking for a decent house in a nice area and, and can either get a loan or, or has cash, it's a great deal. They're buying it at a discount. So basically, hoteling is a little bit higher than wholesale, a little bit less than retail, and you put it on the MLS and take the best offers. Right. So on this particular property, um, and of course, you've got an amazing team that's working with you, so you may not know exactly the answer to this. But if you do know, how did you find this deal? Um, this deal actually came from direct mail, okay? It came from direct mail. Um, we, we mail out probably about 25,000 pieces a month, okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's kind of funny. You said, I know you got a big team and all that, man. I, I, I got three people, me, myself, and I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. I, I love it. I love it though. I do have a team, Candace and I, and you know, Candace, yep. she and I are in the trenches. I've got another girl. She does HUD houses and, and, and she's our agent and she does HUD houses as well. And she also does our closings. And then I've got another guy, Dan, and he sells all of our properties. But Candace and I, we're in the trenches every day doing deals. I mean, I, I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. I, I, I like I like the paper. So I call all these people every day. These are lead sheets that she writes up. And I just get on the phone and call them, you know. So, so I mean, you being, you being a nationally recognized guru, if you will, in the space, Right. Uh, state training, you personally to this day are still talking to sellers. I love it, man. I enjoy it. Amazing. That's awesome. And so what I love about that, Larry, and it's the same with me. So, you know, you, you do the business. You're very involved, obviously, today. Right. You, te you teach the business. Right. Uh, I'm the same. I do the business. I do the business. Uh, I focus on different areas than you do. I teach the business and I tell you, you know, what comes to mind is 
what I respect about you so much is that you uh, as you know, marketing changes over time. Right. You got to roll with the changes. You have to definitely roll with the changes. There's no question about that. It's uh, the marketing changes, the economy changes, the market changes, everything changes. And you just got to, that's one, that's actually my number one favorite song is Roll With The Changes by Ari <laughs> Wagon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know, as you said, you've done all aspects of real estate as far as single family houses go. You, as far as controlling them, you uh, you buy them subject to lease option, you know, blah, 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 blah. So today, today, this year, what areas of real estate are you really focusing on as far as the kinds of deals you're doing? Oh, that's a great, great question. I, Jay, I love the lower priced properties, you know, I'm picking up properties for 10, 15, 20, 30, $35,000. Okay. I love those houses. I love them. And I'm doing two models right now. That's the only two models I'm doing. Number one, I'm day trading, wholesaling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up now. You just said you're doing day trading in real estate. Yeah. And, and it's just wholesaling. You know, I mean, I, I wrote a book called Getting Started in Real Estate Day Trading how to buy and sell houses the same day using the internet. And we've actually done deals in 12 different states right from our office here in Lake Wiley. But, but that's all it is. We're just wholesaling properties. And, and, and we, we're doing those two models. We're wholesaling to stash cash for the crash. Okay. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. So you're day trading. Right. To- Stash cash for the crap for the crash. Explain right. what that means. Well, that just means, I mean, think about it. Where are we in the cycle, right? Where are we in the cycle? To me, we're somewhere around here. It could go up a little more. It might start going down. Personally, I hope I hope it stays where it is until at the end of 2020, right? Or first of 2021. I think it's probably going to be 18 months to two years plus before we start seeing seeing stuff really go down. Lenders are a lot more conservative than they were before in 2008, right? So it's not really going to be a crash, I don't think. But think about this. You know this, Jay. You've been in business long enough to know, in the real estate business especially, that trees don't grow to the sky, right? What goes up comes down, right? But then it goes back up again. Right. So, So I'm doing two things right now. I'm I'm wholesaling to stash cash for the crash and I'm seller financing and le- doing lease options. In other words, I'm buying properties like I'll buy a property for say 15 grand and I'll sell it for 49.9 and get $5,000 down and I'll collect the payments, right? I'll buy a house for 30 grand, I'll sell it for 69.9, get $5,000 down and collect the payments over the next 20 years. And you're selling you're selling these properties by and large as is, right? Like sort of work for equity? Absolutely as is. I never touch them. I, I, I don't want to touch them. I don't right. want to touch them. I hate rehabs. Hate, hate, hate rehabs. I've yep. been doing real estate, real estate long enough to know there's three things in real estate I hate. Everything else I love about it. And what are the three? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I hate rehabs, tenants, and short sales. That's the three things I won't do. Right. Rehabs, tenants, and short sales. <laughs> got it. Got it. And I think toilet goes, toilets goes along with tenants, right? Exactly. Trash and termites too, right? <laughs> but, but, I, but I love real estate. There's so many things you could do with it. You can get huge returns. We're getting triple digit returns on these little filthy riches deals, I call them. Right, right. So you buy, you buy this quote unquote cheap house, low price house. And, you know, here's the retail after your tenant, your, your, uh, now are you owner financing or, or lease purchase or rent to own? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you the difference. Okay. <laughs> You're going to love this. Okay. Well, here's what we do. If the house is what we would call or consider fit and safe. In other mm-hmm. words, we cannot enter into a landlord tenant relationship if the house needs a water heater or 
the deck is three feet off the ground and the rail is missing. You know, we can't we can't rent that house out, right? Safety hazard. Fit and safe. If the house is fit and safe, I'm going to do a lease option, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a landlord tenant relationship and I call them homeowners in training. Okay. Now, if the house is not fit and safe, maybe the water heater is gone or, or something doesn't work. Maybe there's a little plumbing issues or something, then I'm going to do a land contract. Okay. I'm going to sell it to them on a contract for deed, also known as a land contract. And, and they're going to put as much down as I can get three to $5,000 down or more. And then I'm going to collect the payments, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we do that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, And it sounds like, you know, even though you don't have a large staff per se, it sounds like that, I mean, for you to handle, you said you're mailing out about 25,000 pieces a month, right? So out of 25,000 pieces, on average, what percent or how many responses will you get out of that? Well, it really depends. Some, some weeks, when we first started our direct mail, we were getting six, seven, eight hundred calls a week, right? Woo. But now we're down to probably a few hundred calls a week. Mm-hmm. And um, but that's okay. I mean, it, it round robins between Candace and I. If I don't answer it, it goes to her. If she doesn't answer it, it goes to Pat Live. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So let's, 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 I, I love, I love the day trading thing with seller financing. I don't, I haven't heard of anybody else out there doing it, uh, et cetera. So I want to come back to that in a little bit. So let's change, let's change gears a little bit. So, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to just hit you from, ask you from the hip here. I know. So you've been doing this for 30 years. And, you know, we learn lots of lessons and we don't stop learning lessons. Um, But what would be one or two, whatever comes to mind, of the biggest lessons learned that you've learned while being in the business, either from a particular house or doing deals, perhaps the way that, you know, that's just not the way to go for me. But just overall, what's that big or biggest lessons learned from the past? Wow. 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 That's as you're asking that question, like eight or 10 things came to mind, right? I understand. The first thing that came to mind was the more you're in real estate, the more you realize what you do want to do and don't want to do. For example, if I was brand new, okay. And the only thing I could do was a short sale, man, I'd go to McDonald's and flip burgers. Okay. I, I hate short sales. Okay. If I had to deal with tenants, you know, I'd be out of the real estate business. I hate dealing with tenants. Now, homeowners in training are not near as bad as tenants. Okay. So, so, but I I love that. I love, there's so many different. So as you grow and as you evolve as a real estate investor, you determine, here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. I enjoy this. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy talking to people on the phone. I mean, I get a thrill of buying houses over the phone. I get a thrill. All my calls are recorded, right? And and my goal, Jay, this may sound a little little odd, but my goal, I've got a little competition going on with myself, right? Okay. The the shortest amount of time that since I've been recording my calls in probably the past few months, the shortest amount of time I bought a house from never having talked to the person before to 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 hanging up the phone it's 10 minutes and 38 seconds. <laughs> so I, although I did just buy a house earlier and, and I asked, I asked my customer service guy, send me this recording. So let me see how long this recording is. It doesn't right. say it's uh, it doesn't really say how long it is, but, uh, <laughs> but, but it was probably about 15 minutes long. But anyway, okay. I just bought a nice brick ranch house with a double car brick garage for $25,000 just before we got on this podcast. Woo! Now, when you say that you bought these houses. Well, I got an offer accepted on this. So you you got a a verbal offer accepted. Right. Over the the phone. Right. And uh, so what's the next step after you get a verbal acceptance? What happens next? Great, great question. Uh, Jay, 
I got this down to a science, man. I love this. So here's what I do. I'll tell the lady, I say, you know, uh, uh, what I'd like to do is, is, is get out there and, and take a look at the property and get all the paperwork going so we can get this thing started and get you your money as soon as possible. You know, would, uh, are you going to be there in a couple hours? Well, yeah, I'll be there in a couple hours. Great. I've got somebody in your area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them run by and get the paperwork done and snap a few pictures of the house and we can get this thing rolling. Oh, okay. That sounds good. So then I've got a mobile notary service that I don't care if I'm buying a house in Jackson, Mississippi or Dubuque, Iowa or Jacksonville, Florida or Lake Wiley, South Carolina. I can have a mobile notary person there in about one hour. Wow. Is that great or what? That's awesome. That's awesome. So how does the notary person get the paperwork? Oh, I guess by email? Yeah. What I do is, is I, I go to the website. I prepare the contract. Well, I don't. Candace prepares the contract. And it's very simple. We, you know, it's a one page contract. That's all it is. Just a one page because we don't want stuff too intimidating. Right. So, so she prepares that she uploads it to the website and places an order for the mobile notary. They don't even need to be a notary, but they go out there and they sign the stuff. It costs me 75 bucks. Okay. But within two hours of me being off the phone, I've got a signed contract with pictures of the house in hand. Awesome. So once the uh, mobile notary has got it under or has got it signed, what happens next? Yeah. Then, then it comes into our office and we're going to send somebody out to, we're going to send somebody out. Typically my sales guy, Dan. Now, if it's out of state, because we've done deals in 12 different states, although we focus on the Carolinas, but if it's out of state or too far for him to go, We'll send a local boots on the ground person and you can find somebody on Craigslist or Facebook groups or whatever. You know, they're easy to find. Right. So, but we'll go out and we'll do what we call sign the property. We put out our signs. If we're going to wholesale it, the sign says handyman special with the number of bedrooms, baths, what it's worth and what our cash price is. If we're owner financing it, doing the filthy riches model, then the sign simply says owner financing. And it has a phone number and it and it has a dollar sign and we put how much down. Right. 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 So because they're not buying on price, they're buying on down payment. There you go. They want to know two things, how much down and how much a month. That's right. So you got this house under contract. Uh, now you're signing the house by starting the market of the house. So how do you deal with the logistics of someone wanting to see the house while the seller is still living in it? Typically, the seller does not live in the house. So it's now, typically vacant? And typically, it's either vacant or it's tenant occupied or they live there. For the most part, it's vacant. Uh -huh. right? But it, here's what, if, if it's tenant occupied or they live there, like the mobile notary service, like this house in Kannapolis, I told you at the beginning of this podcast, that guy lives in Boston, Massachusetts, right? I mean, literally within two hours, there's a signing company at his house in Boston, right? Right. right. Getting the paper so, signed. So it sounds like some of your marketing is really targeting the vacant houses, right? Yeah, it's it's basically absentee owners. Yep. Right. Absentee owners, inherited, probate, code violation, delinquent taxes, some of those sort of things. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but if we need if we need to show the house, we'll get them in there. But our goal is to take enough pictures and video to where we have a lot of people that buy the house just off the pictures and the video and the information. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Especially if they're an investor, you know, right. an investor, uh, cause we sell houses, whether it be cash or with owner financing to investors, we'll owner finance a house to an investor and then they're going to rent it out. Right. Exactly. Exactly. My land's like we're almost out of time for the show. And I just want to keep going because you're just a wealth of information, man. Um, so before, before we get to the end of the show, since you are still so active yourself in right. talking with sellers uh -huh. I mean, right now today, and you love it, obviously after all these years, you are a beyond expert at it. What are some tips that you can give as to when you are a real estate investor talking to a seller on the phone, what are some tips as to how that conversation should go to help it be a successful conversation. 
Well, the first thing you want to do is get them to like you and trust you, right? I don't talk about real estate. I, I talk about, you know, you know, hey, this is Larry with Neighborhood Housing. How you been? Who do you say how you been to? People you know, right? Whether you know this person or not, you know, it, it, it gives that mentality that, you know, this is a friend, right? So how you been? Hey, did I catch you at a bad time or you got a second? Always give them an alternate choice and make the second choice what you want them to say. Did I catch you at a bad time or you got a second, right? Awesome. They, they usually pick the second one, right? So, and then, you know, I just build a little rapport with them. And then I'll say, so what's going on to make you, uh, to make you look at selling this property right now? What's going on in your life to cause you to call us about selling a property, right? I don't talk about, tell me about the house. I say, what's going on with you? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm getting older and, you know, I want to move closer to my grandkids or I don't want to deal with tenants anymore or I need some cash. And this is the asset that I have to get some cash to pay off some bills or whatever it is. Right. And I try to solve problems with people. And, and I also I, I also tell a lot of stories. Right. I'll say, you know, like if I was talk, talking, like, like, let's say I'm talking to a guy and he's a family man. You know, and I'll say, you know, you know what, you know what, Jay, you remind me a lot of, awful lot of Rob. I, I helped Rob just last month. Great guy, family man, trying to take care of his family, help him out. You know, you remind me a lot of him. Let me tell you how I was able to help Rob. Awesome. Right? Just stuff like that. I love it. I love it, Larry. Man, I tell you what, uh, whoo, one of the one of the best guests I have had on the show, Larry. I appreciate awesome. you time so much. And as I said a few minutes ago. I love how you do seller financing. You call it, you know, day trading in real estate, you know, the filthy riches thing. So um, can can you offer to my listeners and uh, my viewers, I believe you've got an on-demand uh, on demand class that, uh, yeah. that digs deep more into that, the, into that business model. Absolutely. We've got we've got a 90 minute webinar that delves deep into a model I call filthy riches. It's how to make more money on a rundown five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar house than most investors make on a hundred thousand dollar house. I'm going to show investors how to get triple digit returns, right? And start from where they are right now. And you don't even need a buyer's list with this. No buyer's list required, right? And 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 I've had more students that have tried this, this thing, this thing, this thing, and they've done their very first deal with the filthy riches model. So, so we prepared this webinar and we set it up for your, uh, for your students and uh, you know, they can go check it out. That's awesome. So folks, uh, whether you're viewing on YouTube or listening, if you're viewing, we're putting it right here on the video. Here's the website to go get the education. It's only 90 minutes long. Uh, Larry's doing uh, the teaching. I, Larry, I assume you're doing the teaching on this. Absolutely. Every right. bit of it. And uh, so here's the website, folks. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash filthy riches. That one more time, jayconner.com forward slash filthy riches. And check out the, um, and go learn, not only check it out, but learn the seller financing day trading strategy that Larry Goins, uh, the only person I know that's doing the business like this. So before we sign off, one more reminder to everybody, it's right around the corner, just a few weeks away, the uh, Jay Connor Cashflow Conference coming right around. So get on over to www.jayconnor.com forward slash money podcast. And I look forward to seeing all of you at the upcoming live event. Larry, my lands, what a blessing you were today. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this wealth of information. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. It's been a lot of fun. All right. Same here. And I'll be seeing you soon at our mastermind group that we're in right around the corner. Absolutely. And, uh, have a great day, Larry. Thank you so much for sharing. Bye. Thanks, for now. You too. Thanks a lot, everybody.